Hi, it's Booney. I started reading a new book. It's called The Neuroscience of Psychotherapy by Cozzolino. It's a Norton book, and I, I love Norton books. And um, I just started it, so there's not much for me to talk about, but I wanted to um, address it because I think it talks about why um, neuroscience can support the findings that psychotherapy works, you know, it can help heal people. So, um, firstly, we have, we could categorize our brains into three parts. Um, the first part is the reptilian brain, where all of our natural, um, the bodily processes function, and we don't really need to kind of use our brains to make it work, it just happens, like it's, it's by default, that is there for us to survive. And um, on top of that is the limbic brain, you know, the um, emotional part of our brain where we um, appraise whether things are going to be fight or flight. And on top of that is the, um, the neo-mammalian brain or the cere cerebral cortex where we have higher um, functioning, where we can um, have self-awareness and kind of think before we act. And that mostly develops in our mid-20s and throughout our entire lives. And so based on this understanding of the brain, when we're younger and we're getting primed and having our schemas built, it makes sense that our first early experiences dictate our worldviews because those neural networks have been developed first, they were triggered first, and they become, for many of us, our natural and default modes of behaving. Um, so instead of having a, the capacity to think clearly or logically to assess consequences of our actions when we are younger, um, we're more emotionally um, triggered maybe, or things are paired with emotion. That's how um, learning and memory uh, is, is correlated, I guess. Um, the more emotionally intense something is, the more likely it will be retained. And so most of our memories can be um, paired with emotionally intense uh, situations. And that's how we learn. We learn for survival and things that are novel, things that are um, implicating safety or threat are more likely to be remembered for the sake of evolutionary purposes. So um, with that understanding of the brain and why we, rem we remember the things that we remember and why we behave the way we behave based on early experiences, um, that shapes the neural networks in our brains. It, it, it kind of solidifies and makes certain roots you know, in the, in the network stronger because it's paired with the history of survival. It's paired with the history of threat perhaps and um, wanting to survive. And um, the problem with that is that when we're in the present, maybe the threat is no longer there. And um, we may be repeating these behaviors or modes of thinking or feeling when the threat is no longer there. So it may impact our current relationships in the present. It may impact our worldviews um, because something in our past triggered us forced us to say, hey, this was a dangerous moment in our lives and we need to be ready to fight or flight at any moment. And so we're constantly in hyper aroused mode maybe. And um, it's something that psychotherapy can help us work through. And um, rebuilding the, social, um, the neural networks, I think that all theoretical orientations work. Um, I think that the therapeutic relationship is, you know, beyond the number one reason why healing would occur. You know, having someone kind of creating a space and safety for someone to test out reality and create no new normals is very important. Um, we don't really have a chance to do that in the real world because, um, we have a mode of behaving and thinking and feeling that has enabled us to survive as much as we could have survived in the moment. And so um, 
it creates a, a lot of stress though and sometimes the behaviors can affect us and then break down parts of us and we don't want to do that anymore so if that's the case going to a psychotherapist can help because again like i said before that space that's created it takes time to establish new neural networks um it's like when you water a tree and certain branches or roots get the water those are going to be the stronger roots or when you work certain muscles in your body and you don't work the the small muscles like when you're bodybuilding um your body and your brain goes to the default neural networks it goes to the default muscles and so having someone um empathic and truly accepting of who you are and your life experiences can help shape new neural networks they can help introduce slowly but um quite necessarily new stressors because maybe our threshold for stress or change is quite low and it's scary it really is scary to change and so kind of what the therapist's job is to to to, in, to gauge where to create that necessary um discomfort for a person to grow and having the safety again in that room can and do wonders for someone's growth and healing i think that's it's so awesome, you know, and when someone accepts you and doesn't judge you, they don't blame you for what happened in the past, but they they acknowledge that, yes, the way you behaved made sense in the past because that's the tools you had and it makes sense to behave with the environment the way it was. But now that things have changed, the environment has changed, life circumstances have changed, people have a chance to forgive themselves and grow with the um with the support of a, a really awesome psychotherapist and um yeah i just think that's awesome so that is part of my ramble today about um the neuroscience of psychotherapy and um i hope that it made sense